PayPal co-founder and Facebook investor Peter Thiel says LinkedIn's IPO was undervalued by banks and Wall Street just doesn't get it. For more on what this means for the next social media companies waiting in the wings, we bring in Mo Koifman. He is principal at Spark Capital, a venture capital firm that invests in new media. Mo, always good to see you. Pleasure Thanks very always. much for coming in. What do you make of Teal's comments, the fact that Wall Street just doesn't get it? Is he right? I mean, I think that's uh, perhaps a bit harsh, although I think he's making a fair point. Um, which is, uh, you know, anytime you see an IPO pop that much on the first day, you have to ask the question as to whether it was priced correctly. Um, you know, supposedly the roadshow and, and the opportunity for the, uh, for the company to go out and speak with institutional investors provides the bank and, and the company with, with that, the data they need to make a correct pricing decision. I think in the LinkedIn IPO's case, uh, they didn't. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with just the uh, pent up uh, market demand for social media properties that was just, you know, boiling over, so to speak. And I think that's, you know, it's a pricing an IPO is always a bit more um, art than it is science. But I think uh, I think Peter's comments and the comments of many others in the in the press and in the internet world are saying we got to put a little more science to this because, you know, yeah, and Morgan Stanley and Bank of America who underwrote it look pretty bad. I mean, there's a two hundred million dollar difference. Well, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, there's two sides to the to the coin, right? There's the selling shareholders and the, and the buying shareholders and the bank's job is to navigate those two different interests. And, you know, it's very uh, the, the clients that the on the on the buying side, all the institutional investors are obviously long term clients of the bank. And I think it's very, it's incumbent on them to make sure that they're treating their, uh, you know, the, these, this class of companies coming out into the public markets equitably. Do you think this is another reason for a new hot tech company to wait a little bit longer in the wings? In other words, not to be part of this first round that maybe they think, okay, Wall Street either doesn't understand my business, they're not going to get the pricing right, and we're going to get ripped off. I, I don't think so. I, I think what, uh, if anything, it shows that the market, which is Wall Street, does understand the business, or at least maybe understands it too well and wants to own it too badly. Um, if you just look at, you know, some of the pricing fundamentals, um, I, I think all it says is that. Uh, People need to be more diligent in how they take these things out and how they price them. I think companies need to step up a little bit and keep their banks in check, and banks need to do a better job of balancing the interests on both sides. In fact, I think this is probably a good thing for the the, the class of IPOs that are going to follow LinkedIn we here. We assume Zynga's pretty soon. Yeah, um, probably in the fall. And I think um, you know the reality is that uh, I think LinkedIn IPO is a lesson to everybody. Uh, you know, they were the, they were the first, so you know they had the growing pains there, but. Um, I think I think everybody's taken notice in the world of social media and, and always on press. I think uh, you know the banks are gonna are gonna be pretty considered about this uh, next class of companies coming out there. Not exactly social, but the iCloud is coming, so we hear. Do you think Apple can succeed where Google and Amazon failed? Um, well, I I'm not sure that Amazon has failed yet. Um, you know, they launched their cloud offering very, very recently. Um, you know, I'm a user of the product. I, I don't think they've gotten it exactly right, but I, I certainly think as far as a cloud company goes, they've, they've gotten that part pretty right from an enterprise perspective. Remains to be seen how they do on the consumer side, although I wouldn't count them out. Uh, in terms of Apple, um, I would say... 200 million iTunes yeah, buyers can't be wrong, right? I mean, they're in the... Um, they're in the best possible position to really shake up this market. I think the question there is, will this software platform be as good as, as the hardware platform that they've uh, obviously really knocked the cover off the ball with? They, they seem to have gotten further with uh, the music, the, the recording studios, the labels, so to speak. But I mean, they still have a hurdle to go in that the rights to the melodies and the, the songs' words are still on one side and then the songs on another. So I don't know how they're well, going to navigate. If there's anything that the record labels understand, it's leverage. And that's what Apple has now in these discussions. And so, you know, from two perspectives, one is uh, from the leverage perspective, from working with the, with the music industry perspective, they're in as good a position as anybody to do that, um, period. Uh, and then just in terms of being able to deliver the best products uh, and an integrated set of products that works both hardware and software yeah, to it's market, I, it's... Uh, it's it's the best consumer product company of, of my generation, certainly. So I think that's pretty incredible. 
Mo, while you're here, we always have to ask you what's next. <clears throat> Excuse me, you've been an investor in, in a lot of the companies that we now use, the products we now use. What do you like the most from what you see out there? Um, well, I'll give you um, a couple things. One is, I think it's, it's fairly far along, but, but um, may still be new to some folks and some viewers, which is a company called Dropbox. Uh, which I think is, you know, I've been tracking for a number of years now, probably a couple, three years, and they have just built one of the most incredible web products uh, out there today that I use literally each and every day. And what Dropbox does is it basically takes that old, well, it, it gives you the ability to store and sync all your files in the cloud across multiple devices. So you have five computers, four computers. Anytime you go to a computer, you can access anything, whether it's a document, music, a spreadsheet, whatever, photos, any, um, any, very anything. easily. And um, the beauty of it is they've essentially taken like a core piece of the operating system that was traditionally on, on the PC or the Mac or whatever you're using. Um, and they've put it in the cloud and they've made it really, really seamless and easy to use and really easy to access from anywhere. And they just give you a, a ton of storage. Uh, and you can upgrade, obviously, to a premium account. And they've been growing like gangbusters. I expect to see a big capital raise there also in the near term. I think that's one of the, the medium to, to later stage companies to really watch. Okay. Um, and then one other, on, you know, on the earlier side, I, we've talked about it before, but a, a lot of innovation on the e-commerce side. Um, a couple companies worth pointing out here in New York. Um, one is called uh, Birchbox, which is uh, a really great company started by two gals out of Harvard Business School, um, which basically is a $10 a month subscription product. You can where, try whatever makeup you want. Exactly. So you're familiar with yes. it already. And I think they're doing a, a tremendous job. And I think they have a lot of growth ahead of them, both in the beauty vertical and potentially beyond. And then a second one is Warby Parker, which is doing a similar thing in the eyeglass uh, business, completely uh, reinventing the value chain there. And I, I think that's another company in New York in the e-commerce space that we should certainly be watching. Three great ideas, Mo. Thank you so much, Mo Koifman, joining us right here in the newsroom, principal with Spark Capital.